a person for what a powerful message. Amazing. You best shall have a big I saw tears in many people's eyes. I saw tears in many people's eyes during the message. I know that God has touched many. Now, in the rap, in the rap, I just want to. Before I pray that, before we begin the rap, I want to share some stories and powerful things. What Paul says. Powerful things. What Paul says. First, first of all, he said, "Our gospel didn't come in words only." In first of all, he says, "Our gospel did not come in words only." And of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. And I always get amazed. 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 Yeah, stories. To hear stories. Of how the gospel changes lives. Of how the gospel changes lives. I mean, I mean, cannibals. And cannibals. Nice. Coming to Christ, which doctors, which doctors, being transformed, being transformed, by demon possessed people, demon possessed people, being healed, being healed. So before every rap, so before every rap, I want to have people come on. So I want to have people come on. Share with you for a few minutes. And share with you for a few minutes. A testimony. A testimony. Is that okay? Is that okay? Right. And we all rejoice. And you all rejoice. A uh, message on one word. The you know, message is not only it's, it's not word only. Company, company with power of God's spirit. Company with power of God's spirit. Now, I want to share with you for five, seven minutes. I want to share with you for five, seven minutes. Powerful principle. Powerful principle. Powerful my message. I will read from the screen. And after which, that's my word, I share. After which, after that, that's my word, share. A short testimony. A short testimony. Of a demon possessed man. Of a demon possessed man. Yeah. About him. But now in our church. He is now in our church. And what he said to us was so amazing. And what he said to us was so amazing. Yeah. So, first, yeah, we want to say to you. This is what I would say to you. As a, as a preparation. As a preparation. For Pastor Marvel. So what Pastor Marvel is going to say. Okay, so in the New Testament we find many uh, different Greek words which signify God's power. Two of these words are exousia, which refers to authority, and dunamis, which is the dynamic power usually associated with the Holy Spirit. Christ has given the believer both authority over the enemy in his name and dynamic power through his Holy Spirit. Exercising authority over the enemy in Jesus' name. A policeman who weighs 150 pounds can stand before an 18-wheeler truck and with an uplifted hand say stop in the name of the law. He is appealing to an authority higher than himself. The truck stops because of that name or authority. The policeman certainly did not and could not stop the truck with physical force. His badge and uniform carry the authority of the government he represents. We need to learn a lesson here. Our authority over Satan does not rest in the fact that we are stronger than he is. We are not. Yet when Jesus sent out his disciples, he said to them, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you in Luke 10, 19. What Jesus literally said was, Behold, I have given you authority, which is exousia, over all the power of the enemy. Note the difference between power and authority. The policeman stops the truck with authority, not with power. 
Likewise, we overcome Satan not with power but with the authority of Jesus' name. Jim Simbala, pastor of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church in his inspiring book, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, tells us of how his teenage daughter Chrissy, raised up in a Christian home, drifted far away from God for a season. At age 16, she got into a wrong relationship with a guy and began to live in rebellion towards God. At age 18, she moved out of her home and went to live with a boyfriend in another state. Her parents were heartbroken. No amount of advice or pleading with her was making any difference. They prayed and prayed for weeks and months, but it seemed like there was no answer. Their daughter's heart seemed to be getting more and more away from God. And then one day in a Tuesday evening prayer meeting, Pastor Simula and 40 others led to cry out afresh to God in fervent intercession for Chrissy's life. The church's intercession for Chrissy was heartfelt and intense that evening. Many of those prayer intercessors were taking the authority and declaring, Satan, you have no, you have to give it up. Chrissy belongs to God. Take your clutches off her now. And Pastor Simbla went back from the prayer meeting assured that God was going to do something. Only two days later, something did happen. Quite unexpectedly, Chrissy drove all the way to her parents' home from out of state, burst into the house, got on her knees weeping before her father saying, Daddy, Daddy, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. As Jim looked on astounded at this sudden dramatic turn of events, Chrissy admit that this a weeping turn to her physically and asked, Daddy, who was praying for me on Tuesday night? Tell me, who was praying for me on Tuesday night? When Pastor Simula inquired why she asked such a question, Chrissy continued, On Tuesday night I had a horrible dream. In my dream, I was falling into a scary dark bottomless pit and the devil was trying to hold on to me and destroy my life. The dream was so vivid I woke up screaming very afraid. And when I woke up, I suddenly sensed that I was being enveloped in the arms of God, who was comforting me with His loving presence. I realized then that, that God was trying to get my attention. Then she added again, Daddy, who was praying for me? Imagine that. The very night after a powerful prayer meeting was when God gave Chrissy a dream that would turn her back to God. Coincidence? No. God moved in answer to prayer. So real was the Holy Spirit's conviction upon her heart that the very next morning Chrissy left her boyfriend, packed her bags and drove straight back to her parents' home. In the year that followed, she went to Bible college. Today she is a pastor's wife, joyfully serving God. Knowing that the name of Jesus confers authority over the power of the enemy, we can understand more fully what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. To pray in His name does not necessarily mean that we are close, that we close our prayers with a familiar formula. In Jesus' name, Amen. I cannot find any prayer in the Bible that ends that way. I am not saying it's wrong to close a prayer in that manner, but that is not what Jesus meant when He taught us to pray in His name. To pray in Jesus' name simply means I pray for the things on his heart. I pray for the things on his heart. But his power to me. And his power of returning. I have his power of returning. So and I like the fact. And I like the fact when you prayed, when you prayed said, Satan hit us in the toe. You say, when you prayed and said, Satan get your clutches off. And very night, that very night, God worked. I mean, sometimes we need to stand against the enemy. We, we stand against the enemy. So, what? Bible says, Bible says, not to God. And this is the devil. Submit to God and you resist the devil. I need to know which to do when. I need to know which to do when. Amen. <laughs> I don't submit to things of a man. I don't <coughs> submit to the things from the enemy. I submit to God and things come from God. I submit to those things. I submit to God when things that come Since from God. Enemy, the things of the devil. Some things of the devil. Some things of the devil. And we need to take authority. We need to take authority. And we do. And we do. To answer 
when we do it, he runs away. And when he fast forward, he comes This was my first experience. I never saw this before. When me, uh, Pastor Carl, we entered inside the room, that uh, demon, the man who had the demon, uh, he came and he fell flat on his face before us. He wouldn't raise up his eyes before us. And um, then he, um, then we uh, started asking, the questions to that demon, and we were very surprised about the, the answers he would give. And uh, didn't know the Bible in and out. Didn't know every verse of the Bible. And the, uh, the demon said, I know you, Pastor Khan, Miris, I know you both are pastor. I know exactly you are pastor, the demon said. And also when we read Psalms uh, 91, the demon cried so desperately, like huge cry, saying, don't read this book. So we asked why this. He said, I am feeling, I'm burning right now. So the demon said. Um, then um, one thing surprises, like surprises so much this, uh, in our conversation, that demon said, I want to kill you, both of us. He says, I, I, I want to kill you. So he said, so, wow, what's stopping you? <laughs> so that, this is what Dini said. I can't do anything because the Holy Spirit is right here. Wow. So we were like shocked. I said, <laughs> this is my first experience. I knew the Holy Spirit exists, but when he said the Holy Spirit is right here, that means to say he sees it, we don't see it. And we know we have inside, inside us. Uh, you know. And then um, we were praying at uh, for some person. We prayed for this lady who was pregnant. And the demon would say, "Don't pray for that lady." He asked why. He says, "I want to kill that baby in her womb." So we were like, uh, we were so surprised. And every point, the demon would wouldn't raise up his head because we have authority in Jesus Christ. And they have been uh, put to loss. We wouldn't play on the face, so we have authority in Jesus Christ. And uh, the screams that demon gave was like, we couldn't, uh, I, we were like so surprised the way the demon was scream, screaming at, at, at every point. And uh, so we were like, uh, we were blown away, away by things that we heard. And um, they could, he could quote, he could quote the Bible, the verses in the Bible. He could quote everything. And the person who had the demon didn't have much knowledge. And at one point, also this was so unique. Um, we want, we asked that name of that demon. What is your name? He wouldn't really reveal the name. And then after a certain point, he revealed one name. So there was another demon in that person speaking in a language which I know because I'm from that place, this only place that has the language. So he's saying in that language to that other demon, don't, don't reveal my name. <laughs> so, so I understood what he was saying. And uh, so he revealed what he revealed, but don't reveal my name. And so it's like the different voices he had. One, we heard two three, four voices, different voices. And it was very shocking. For me, it was the first experience, you know. First time experience, like, you know, mission field and all these things. But I learned a very important lesson there. It's like we have authority in Jesus Christ. 
and we cannot mess up with our Christianity. This is interesting, this is real, and uh, it's the real stuff, you know. So, yeah. Awesome. Now when we enter the room, this man was shaking violently. His eyes were moving all day. He went there into the room, the man was shaking very violently and his eyes were moving in all directions. Different voices. And speaking in different voices. And we said, we said to the demon. And we said to the demon. Tonight we will leave him. Tonight we will leave him. Out of here. Out of here. You're out of here. And we prayed and he was delivered. And we prayed and he was delivered. And we said, we said, we are going to pray. He said, we are going to pray. And be delivered. The demon screamed. The demon screamed. He said, no, no. And he said, no, no. Don't do that. Don't, do that. Don't send us into the pit. Don't send us into the pit. And that we both looked at him. And that time we both looked at each other. We were shocked. We were shocked. I have a standing. My head was standing. My head was standing. The demon knew the Bible. The demon knew the Bible fully. Fully. And as you see, the patient, the man, the demon entered it because it was a pornography. And the demon entered it because of pornography for many years. And then he went to the tantric. And then he went to the tantric. What? This man now is delivered. Was this man now is delivered? He's in the church. He's in the church. He comes every Sunday. He comes every Sunday. Worships. Worships. Wonderful family. Wonderful family. I want to tell you more. He's a manager and a big company. I want to tell you more. He's a manager a big company. And no one knows who he is. And no one knows who he is. That's more myself. That's more myself. Wonderful person. We never told anyone. You never told anyone. But now he worships. But now he worships. With his hands raised. With his hands raised. Wonderful man. Wonderful man. That's the power of Jesus. That's the power of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.